Hello everyone, I'm Maravda and you're watching the Halbon Flash videos. Our guest of the hour is Ernest from Kiln Finance. Ernest, first of all, welcome to the chat. Thank you for talking to us and thank you for the, uh, taking the time to do so. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's your story and what role you're playing at Kiln? Sure, thanks a lot for having me. Um, my name is Ernest Opti. I'm co-founder and chief product officer at Kiln. So I'm running our product and engineering team. Awesome. All right. So what is Kiln all about? Yeah, sure. So we are a enterprise grade staking platform. Basically, what that means is we enable um, institutional customers to stake uh, crypto assets. Um, and I think we'll go into kind of what this means. We also enable white label staking functionality. So if um, customers want to offer staking to their customers, um, we have a set of products to um, to facilitate that via uh, APIs and um, infrastructure and, and smart contracts um, that we've developed and got some great uh, advice from Halbern on actually. Also, oh, that's always, always great to hear. Uh, so it seems like you guys are very focused on B2B institutions, white labeling solutions. What would you say is the overall vision here or, or the overall mission that uh, Kiln is on? Our vision is really that um, staking enables everyone to participate in the value creation of blockchains. Essentially, when you stake, you um, you earn um, part of the, the kind of rewards of the transaction activity that happens on a blockchain. Um, and so we think that it should be um, easy for everyone to participate in staking. And right now there's still a lot of barriers like um, not all assets are stakeable. It's still too complicated to uh, for people to stake like from the place where they tend to custody their assets or hold their assets. Um, so ultimately we think that everywhere where assets are held, it should be possible to stake them. Um, because that way the owners of the assets can actually share in the value being created. And, and you know, that's something that's very different in Web3 versus Web2 is in Web3, um, a big part of the, um, the vision is everyone can participate in the value being created on these ecosystems. And we think staking is a big part, big part of that. And so, yeah, we're super pumped to to help make that happen. I loved what you said right there, that you're addressing the problem of the barrier to entry in many ways as well. So if you could take a step back and think about the overall role that Kiln is playing in the whole staking ecosystem, how would you summarize that? Yeah, um, so I would say we are really focusing on um, uh, enabling products to offer staking to their customers. So um, like custodians, exchanges, market makers, wallets um, who already have a uh, user base, who custody uh, assets, um, and who want to to offer staking to the to their customers, but without having to run the um, the infrastructure for staking themselves, um, which is quite a complicated um, set of engineering tasks and that requires ongoing maintenance and has certain like security um, security requ like requirements. Um, we we aim to handle all that for them, right? So sometimes we talk about it as like the stripe of staking, right? If you're an e-commerce site and you want to accept payments, you don't go and build your own like payment stack. You integrate something like Stripe, which mm -hmm. is like a nice developer-friendly platform. Um, and we're aiming to do basically the same thing, but on uh, uh, on staking as a service. Okay, love that as well, staking as a service. Um, all right, so with that, can you tell us a little bit more on the Kiln on-chain products and who are the key users and clientele there? Yeah, totally. So actually, maybe I can step back a bit on like the different products we have, because it sure. will help explain why we do the on-chain one. Um, so we have four products today, um, Kiln validators, which are running, you know, obviously running validators on um, different cloud platforms on lots of different proof of stake networks. Um, mm -hmm. We cover about 20 right now. Um, then we have Kiln Connect, which is a, an SDK for um, people to integrate staking on lots of different protocols, but with one standardized interface, including collecting rewards data from the different chains. So this aligns with what I was saying about like white label staking, right? You want to, just like on Stripe, you have like one API for integrating all the payment providers, we're aiming to do one API for integrating 
like all the all the chains, right? Um, and then we have Tion on chain, which is um, what we worked on with Halburn on, and um, we actually just launched it uh, in mainnet with uh, Ledger, who's our first customer. So we're super pumped about that. Congratulations. And yeah, thanks. It was a good good day to take a good moment to to ship that. Um, and uh, what this product is is basically a set of smart contracts for simplifying and automating the um, process of staking Ethereum, right? So right now when you stake Ethereum, there's sort of like two big problems for customers like Ledgers, Ledger who want to integrate uh, ETH staking. The first is that the um, the integration into what's called the, the beacon chain, so basically to deposit Ether into um, the beacon chain deposit contract to then be able to validate, it's a complicated integration. So we simplify that integration. And the second uh, problem is that there is no way for customers to um, easy, to earn a commission on the staking rewards. So say you are um, ledger integrating um, uh, like each staking, you want to be able to um, take a, earn a revenue on that. Um, right now with native ETH staking, you would have to invoice your customers and say, hey, we earned you X ETH over the last year. Can you please send us back like, you know, X percent of that as a commission? We have automated that process using smart contracts. Um, and that is particularly relevant for a non-custodial wallet like um, Ledger um, Nanos, right? Um, yeah. But there are lots of other non-custodial wallets because often they will not have a, a close relationship with the customers in terms of being able to invoice them because a lot of these users are anonymous for good reason and and so this is where like kind of our on-chain product shines um and then the last product we have is um a web dashboard we're pretty pretty uh i guess standard but this is kind of the, the control panel for like uh, managing the staking operation um once a customer has integrated a bunch of protocols they can see all the data from all the different stakes coming in and out, um, their commission, and um, and you know it's kind of the 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 place where they also manage all the um, administrative rights around uh, controlling our APIs. Okay, awesome. Thanks for the explanation. Definitely helps clarify a little bit the product suite to me as well. Uh, we talked a lot about you know like Calbon's uh, cybersecurity advisory with you guys. Uh, so. Tell us a bit about what you had in mind when it came to security, how Halbon came about, and what's the work uh, being like? Yeah, totally. Um, so I think we had met Halbon at some conferences, but we really only started working properly together uh, on Liquid Collective, which is a uh, protocol we are involved with for native uh, for liquid staking on Ethereum. Um, so we worked with Halbon on that, and we loved the collaboration, and so we decided to kind of yeah, um, uh, ask you guys to help us also on the on-chain product. The um, ultimately what we what we wanted to help with is basic uh, a thorough kind of security review and advice on the architecture um, of of this whole product, which which was you know several months engagement, sharing designs, discussing with your team, and ultimately um, kind of getting a, a stamp of approval on the smart contracts before deploying to mainnet, which we did um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. All right, congrats again on that as well. Um, and uh, again, always uh, like, like the kind words and the collaboration here. Um, so everybody's talking about staking and they're, uh, they're devising their own use cases around it. And as with everything innovative, um, it also has its own challenges, right? So what was your biggest one while you were creating Kunk and how, how did you go, go ahead and address that? One of the things that's challenging is there's a lot to keep track of. The, the ecosystem is moving so fast in terms of chains, in terms of the projects. Um, we have had to um, get good at prioritizing which chains we launch on, for example, um, mm -hmm. because there's literally hundreds of proof yeah. of stake chains and more and more every day. And so, you know, we're creating interesting, like useful frameworks there has been important. You know, another challenge is is hiring related to, you know related to the fact there's so much going on there's so many cool projects for people to join so we have to um, <laughs> explain where someone should join us versus uh, the hundreds of uh, 
other cool projects. Market conditions also this year have not been yeah. uh, easy, I think, for everyone. So um, we're an early stage company, so we kind of, you know, venture venture funded. So that was also not the easiest time for us to, um, to to raise, but we're happy with where we ended up. There's a few of the challenges we've been, uh, we've been up to. All right. And that's uh, always an interesting journey of an entrepreneur as well. Um, if you could just talk to, you know, like other people building on the staking ecosystem in general and give them like one piece of advice, what would that be? Don't take shortcuts on the infrastructure and security side of things. Um, I think it pays off to invest in a really robust uh, infrastructure stack if you're going to run validators. Uh, we did that with um, uh, Kubernetes-based infrastructures. We spent a little while setting up the foundations, and then that's enabled us to um, to really scale both the number of protocols, but also the number of cloud platforms that we can deploy on. Um, right. Where because now if a customer comes with a requirement to run in a specific cloud or a specific region, it's very easy for us to do, um, and uh, and just to yeah automate as much as possible because that's sort of like the foundation for, for scaling both you know, protocols and then also um, the other types of workloads you're going to run. So not just validators, but also indexers, aggregators, like other services that collect data on chain, which is a super important part of um, our product is actually um, the data APIs that we provide around all the staking rewards data, all this kind of stuff. So um, so yeah, having, which I guess pretty pretty generic, obvious advice, but having really strong infrastructure foundations is a big one. Yeah, I mean, that may be generic, but that sounds like pretty solid advice here. And um, just in general, to close off, if you could um, look at staking, let's say a few years down the line, you know, how do you see the ecosystem evolve and what are your thoughts on that in general? What's important is, and it's already happening, but it's, there's lots of different flavors of staking, right? Because ultimately there are trade-offs in the different ways to stake. Um, yeah. There is no like best solution, right? There are like, you know, there's native staking, which is kind of closer to, um, you know, the, the the kind of the protocol mechanics. And then there's liquid staking where you add a set of other kind of um, smart contracts typically to, to facilitate something. And then you issue a token, which has, um, you know, some sometimes regulatory implications, right? Uh, and tax implications for people. Um, and then, um, you know, there's a whole set of uh, products around helping integrate protocols and integrate staking, which is kind of, you know, what I talked about with what we're doing with Kiln Connect. So I think we're going to continue to see like lots of different um, flavors of staking um, and um, and not just, you know, um, not just on Ethereum, but uh, across all uh, assets, actually. Um, you know, Ethereum was kind of the one where liquid staking took off first, but it's interesting to see that now you see liquid staking across all protocols is coming or is already yeah. there. We are also very interested in, and, and we you know, believe the institutional adoption of uh, staking is going to be a big story in the next few years, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of, a lot of staking in, in crypto products in general ha was driven by sort of like retail usage. I think we're coming to a point where there are, the foundations are being set for institutions to, to participate. A big part of this foundation was uh, great custody solutions, um, right? The uh, the Fireblocks, Coppers, Anchorages, Bitgo, etc. We think one of the big next things will be um, will be staking because the yields, you know, it's sort of like crypto's most native yield, right? Uh, and most yeah. natural yield because you're ultimately getting paid for helping secure the blockchain. You don't have a counterparty risk as you might if you're lending out your assets, and you know we saw exactly. how that can go that can go bad. Um, this year, right? There were a lot of stories around that. Um, so we think staking is just like the most natural yield and that all parts of the market will um, will realize that and um, and that the institutional volume coming in is going to be pretty huge. To our audience, if they had to go in and find out more about Kiln Finance, uh, what would be the channels or the next go to steps there? We are on pretty much all the channels you can expect. Uh, uh, Kiln underscore finance on Twitter. Um, we... Yeah, we're posting quite a lot of content these days, um, not just like uh, kind of um, company news, but also some deep dives into some technical areas. For example, we did quite a lot around the merge because um, we were involved in helping test the merge, helping test 
flashbots, um, helping it also explain certain intricacies of Ethereum. Um, and so, yeah, please check out our blog, check out our uh, YouTube channel. And um, I should mention we're also, um, you know, scaling a lot and hiring uh, pretty much across all functions. So if you're interested in joining uh, kind of fast paced environments, we're about 25 people based in Paris, France, um, but uh, we are um, remote. So we have well, half the company is remote, um, mostly in the Western Europe uh, area in the time zone, right? So, but um, yeah, if you're if you're interested, like we're we're scaling the team a lot and uh, hiring pretty much across all functions. All right, we'll keep that in mind. Thanks so much for joining us for this chat. And if you guys have any questions to kill or just about staking and security around it, drop us a line below in comments and we'll get back to you. Thank you again. Bye.